Okay, in the previous video, um, we referenced the familiar formula for how a magnetic field exerts force on moving charge and showed with the jumping loop that magnetic fields also exert force on currents that flow through a magnetic field. So uh, in this demonstration, we wanna talk about something called the motor effect. The formula here says the torque on a current loop is equal to, now here's a new symbol, mu. Uh, mu shows up a lot in uh, physics formulas, doesn't it? This time, mu represents something known as the um, magnetic dipole moment. And uh, it's really nothing more than the product of how much area this loop has, right? So this would be the area of the circle, pi r squared. Uh, it's the product of that area with the amount of current in amps flowing through the wire. Okay, so that's mu, and uh, the torque exerted on this is a vector cross product between mu and b. So why is mu a vector? Um, we can turn the area into a vector uh, with a right-hand rule. Let's say current flowed in this direction in this wire loop. We would take the fingers of our right hand and simulate uh, a circle flowing counterclockwise if the current was counterclockwise. Our thumb would be pointing in the direction of a unit vector that's normal to the plane of the surface area. And likewise, if the current was flowing clockwise, then we would say that the uh, dipole moment points that way. Okay, so let's see if this really works, if we can get a torque acting on the current loop. So we need a current to flow. Now, if I took these alligators and clipped them on, then as it spins, the wires would get all twisted up. So what I'm gonna use is a, a, well, same thing all motors use, brushes. The alligator clips will serve as brushes that just barely contact this little piece of metal. Notice the gap in it, we call that the uh, commutator gap. Anyhow, here we go. Ooh, a little bit of spin, let's see if we can make that better. There we go. So this is it, this is a DC motor acting on the motor effect. Let's see if we can make it stronger by using two magnets. Okay. Oh shoot, why don't we make it a little more voltage too, huh? We were at 11 volts, we'll go up to 13 volts. We were using a weak magnetic field, now it's intensified. Let's see how fast we can get this to spin this time. Oh yeah, great. Let me remove that magnet. Okay, so again, the torque on the current loop was the cross product of the magnetic dipole moment and the magnetic field. Let me picture it like this. Even though our loop was wound around several times, if we just had one single winding, it would also get a twist. Uh, if this side was momentarily connected to the positive brush, and this side of the loop was connected to the negative brush. Then we would have a current that flows, now this is a three-dimensional drawing, isn't it? So current would be flowing into the page or into the note card here. Then the current would flow to the left. And in this segment of wire, current would be coming basically out of the note card, right? So let's try our uh, right-hand rule and figure out what would be the force on this segment of wire. So point your thumb into the note card, and at the same time, point your fingers to the right. Why? Because magnetic field lines would be pointing from this north pole toward this south pole. So it looks like this segment of wire would get forced downward. Then the current flowing uh, out of the note card over in this segment of wire also sits in the magnetic field, it points this way. So that side of the wire would get forced up. So what we have is a 
upward and downward force on opposite sides of the wire, which would produce this torque. By the way, you notice, if we use another form of right-hand rule, if we put our fingers in the direction of the magnetic dipole moment, and isn't that right? If the current is flowing this way, the magnetic dipole moment would point up. So think about that. Take the vector cross product, not of, not of B crossed into mu, but rather the product of mu crossed into B. So if mu is crossed into B, we would get rotation in that direction. Same thing we would get if this side of the wire is forced down while this side is forced up. So this is why magnetic fields are able to exert torque on a current loop. The upward torque on this segment of wire has a lever arm of, let's call the width of this loop, uh, W, then from the midline axis of rotation, there's a lever arm of W over two and a force of BIL. So that expresses the upward force. This segment of wire has the same amount of force downward, W over two times BIL. So if I add those together, I get two times W over two times BIL which would give me B times I times L times W. But we recognize the length times the width is simply the area of that loop, so torque equals BIA. But notice, just as I said earlier, that's all mu is, is the product of I and A. So this formula is telling us torque is BIA, and this formula says torque is BIA. Pretty cool.